the Honorable Member for Nakuru County, my sister, seeks to know the initiative that the ministry has undertaken to preserve our heritage, our wetlands, and catchment areas. Mr. Speaker, at the policy level, the ministry has put in place National Wetland Conservation and Management Policy 2000, to, 2009 to ensure how we use and the sustainable management of our wetlands in the country and to ensure sustained ecological and socioeconomic functions for the wetlands for both the present and for future generations. The Speaker, the Ministry is now implementing that policy with other stakeholders in order to protect and safeguard wetlands. Two, Mr. Speaker, the Ministry has developed and is enforcing the Wetlands Regulations 20, uh, 2009, which was passed under the Environmental Management and Coordination Act, CAP 387 Laws of Kenya. These regulations, Mr. Speaker, provides a framework that will ensure all wetland resources in our country are utilized in a very sustainable manner, uh, compatible with the continued presence of wetlands and their ecological goods and services. The Speaker the Minister has also designated six wetlands in the country as far as the Ramsar sites. Ramsa is a convention that Kenya has signed internationally in 1992. These sites include Lake Nakuru in Nakuru County, Lake Elimantaita in Nakuru County, Lake Bogoria in Baringo County, Lake Baringo in Baringo County, Lake Naivasha in Nakuru County, and Tana Delta in Tana River County. Thirdly, to promote wise use and conservation of our wetlands and all the associated resources, my ministry is implementing the management plans for several wetlands in our country. Mr. Speaker, I don't want to read, it's a long list. I have provided to the member uh, from Gambele Swamp in Meru, uh, Lake Kenyatta management plan in Lamu, Tana Delta Management Plan in Tana River, Sabaki Estuary Management Plan in Kilifi, Lake Jibe in Taveta, eh, Munungu Swamp in Embu, Saiwa Swamp in Transoia, Kibiroing Wetland Management Plan in Nandi, which are all ongoing, and Lake Bogoria Management Plan, which is under review. Horrible speaker, the military is also restoring all our degraded wetlands by mobilizing various stakeholders, including the national government agencies, county governments, the private sector, NGOs, and the general public and our local communities to restore all degraded areas through planting of trees, and it's part of the wider 15 billion trees growing initiative uh, started by President William Ruto. And it's very, very important, Mr. Speaker, to note that the conservation and protection of our wetland is our sustainability strategy towards attaining 15 billion tree growing goal. Last but not least, Mr. Speaker, we are also implementing a very transformative initiative dubbed Adapt a Wetland, which is beheaded by NEMA. This initiative seeks to cat catalyze the participation of different stakeholders. But, may, but let me warn, Mr. Speaker, a number of our wetlands, people have titled it. When we cancel them, I need the support of this house. People will, will, will bring petitions, people will bring motions, they might even bring an impeachment to, this, to discuss me. I want this house to protect because I'll be protecting the wetlands so cartels will use, I don't want cartels to use the floor of this house. I have seen it when I talk about, I have lived here, I think uh, a quarter of my life. So I know 
Madam Speaker, the third, second question was explaining the measures the minister has put in place uh, on this matter. And Honorable Speaker, Honorable Lise seeks to know the measures. Allow me to respond to this by first observing that the Minister of Environment, Climate Change and Forestry is unwavering in its commitment to protecting Kenyans' indigenous trees through regulatory enforcement. I have one of our top researchers, the CEO of KEFRI here, with me, the scientific research we must protect and community must be engaged, all of which are facilitated by Kenya Forest Service and Kenya Forest Research Institute, KEFRI, which is both uh, in Muguga and in many of our counties. Honorable Speaker, Kenya Forest Service recently employed, as I say, 2,000 plus forest rangers to various regions and posted to various regions and forest stations to strengthen, protect, and conserve efforts that our member of parliament from Nakuru County has raised. In the spirit of collaboration, the ministry has also deployed forest advisory staff to counties to advise our counties, uh, give them advisory service, work with our county governments on forest conservation, on development, and on management issues. Three, to regulate tree harvesting on private lands, our ministry has implemented mandatory inspection and issuance of certificates of origin and movements of all forest permits for movements of all forest-related products. Finally, the ministry actively supports community forest association, formal groups of communities adjacent to our forest, which, is, which collaborates with KFS in sustainable management of our forest. The third, and I think the final question, Mr. Speaker, is, third question that the member has asked is, uh, the status of community forest association. Let me start by explaining the anchorage of community forest association in the Kenyan laws. CFA, as they are called, are incorporated under Section 9 of the Societies Act, CAP 108, but they are domiciled in the forestry sector through Section 48, subsection 1 of the Forest Conservation and Management Act of 2016, pa passed by this August House. Section 49.1 of the F Forest Community Management Association outlines the ob obligation of our forest, I mean community forest association. They are role, and they are given and granted permission to participate in how they help KFS in the management and in the conservation of our forest. Mr. Speaker, currently we have 233 community forest associations. A good example is a group that runs Karura Forest in collaboration with KFS. And they are spread across the country. There are 175 of them which are active. 17 of them are not are inactive. 41 of them are moderately active, with a total of 185,000 535 membership. All these community forest associations, Mr. Speaker, are duly registered with the Registrar of Societies. So they have a legal backing. They help us to protect, conserve with our communities. And they live next to our forest in protecting our national heritage. Community forest associations, Mr. Speaker, engage in forest management activities through what we call participatory forest management plans. Mr. Speaker, our ministry has taken the following steps to ensure community forest associations are equipped and trained to support the 15 billion uh, growing trees strategy of the Kenya Kwanzaa government. The ministry through KFS supports this group by doing what? In developing, in training them, in helping them with good governance, and giving them uh, good guidance on what to do, on how to sustainably manage 
the use of our forest resources and how our forest restoration activities can take place. The Speaker, the Ministry provides through KFS and KFRI. It offers them training in forest governance. It offers them training in monitoring and compliance with the forest regulations, while KFRI provides specialized training in seed propagation, nursery management, agroforestry production. The speaker, before I became a minister, I didn't know what is KFRI and where they are. I really want to ask that one day, members, when you're free, you visit KFRI in, in Miguga. It's a very cold place. You'll find tens, 20 top researchers. They will tell you what you want. They will tell you the type of tree. They spend hours and years, Mr. Speaker, very, very great institution. Mr. Speaker, the community forestation are playing an increasingly significant role in helping us in creating awareness in tree growing campaigns in these 15 billion, you'll find them on site. Seedly production, they have, uh, uh, they have been given that role. They help us in producing those seeds. They help us in running nurseries, uh, in planting and growing trees in gazetted and outside gazetted forest. They protect planted trees from destruction and damage. So they are very, very important. And that's why this August House gave them a role when they were doing the Forest Conservation and Management Act of 2016. Mr. Speaker, I think I have answered all that to the member for Nakuru County, the Honorable Lisa Chelule.